Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Logan Torres. And I'm Emily Childers. On this holiday episode, we've got some important updates from around campus. First, we visit the American Society of Civil Engineers to catch up with their concrete canoe competition. After, we sit down with Chancellor Vicki Carwine to get her perspective on the USAP report. We also have an update on the latest USAP news. Then, we visit the League of Legends eSports group to watch their holiday tournament. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of Dadons. At the beginning of the semester, we got the chance to catch up with the American Society of Civil Engineers. The Great Lakes Student Conference is an annual conference that ASC attends every year. ASC is the American Society of Civil Engineers, and basically our club goes every year and we compete against other schools, um, civil engineering departments. Uh, there's a variety of events. Um, I'm involved in the Concrete Canoe. Last year I was involved in the surveying competition. Uh, there's also a steel bridge. Uh, materials design and mystery design to name a few. The Great Lakes Student Conference takes place every spring. Uh, this year we're having it in the end of March and beginning of April. This year we're going to Milwaukee. We compete in all the events that are available. You generally have to com compete in all of them to even have a chance of placing. Uh, we usually rank around the middle. Uh, we won the environmental competition last year, so that was pretty cool. Our ranking typically depends on the event. Some years we outrank Purdue in like the overall competition, but it honestly, it just depends. So in order to make a concrete canoe, there's a variety of steps. It's a year-long project. In August, we started kind of planning our canoe. We'd both been to previous conferences and kind of taken notes on like things we wanted to change and what we liked about other teams' canoes. Uh, the first kind of phase is you have to go through and you have to kind of plan out what you're doing. You have to design some test mixes. You have to get funding. Um, kind of put together a team. After you've done kind of a semester of like research and designing the mix and designing the hull and all that sort of stuff, generally we pour the canoe before Christmas break. It's all about the density of the mix. Uh, so water, you know, has a, a set density. So we have to design a mix that is less dense than that. We do a test called the swamp test. So before you even start racing, you have to go and put your canoe in the water and then push it down and it has to fill with water and then it has to come back up within, I think it's like a minute or two minutes. And it won't do that if it's too dense, it'll sink to the bottom. And the reason they do that is actually for safety. I have two main goals about uh, our canoe this year. The first goal is to just improve upon our canoe from last year. My second primary goal is to turn the canoe into kind of a multi-generational project. I mean, I think in the engineering department, this is a really good opportunity to develop like the creative thinking that you don't always necessarily get to do in your classes. I also think that taking a big project like this and going to compete is an opportunity for us to represent IPFW. If you've been following the events on campus, then you know that the USAP report has been very controversial. Students and faculty have voiced their opinions on the topic, and we had the opportunity to sit down with the chancellor to get her view on the USAP report. While this decision may come as a surprise to a lot of people, we've actually been talking a lot about this for almost a solid year. The Legislative Service Agencies, or the LSA study as it has become known, um, was actually a study that was mandated by the legislature in the last session, and it was a study of governance of IPFW. <laughs> Since the time I arrived uh, four and a half years ago, this campus every single year has been under some study by some entity relative to governance. And um, clearly the, the governance model that, that has been in place for 50 years of IU and Purdue sort of jointly having oversight of the campus and yet Purdue was the fiscal manager, did all the business office kinds of things for us and whatnot, um, was clearly, that model is, is clearly very complicated and very complex. It's one that um, while there were issues with the governance model and there were various um, concerns that had been addressed through those 50 years by faculty and staff and administration on this campus. Um, clearly the, the faculty and staff and administration here had, had made that model work in order to serve students and to make the educational experience here between IU and Purdue pretty seamless for students. So there is no question that this is going to be a, a transition 
Um, that's going to be challenging and it's going to be difficult. Um, would be interesting. I haven't I haven't talked um, with anyone from Trine yet. But, you know, Trine used to be Tri-State. They changed their name to Trine. Um, there are other institutions around the country that have gone through name changes. They've gone through, you know, evolving into something very different from what they had been a decade before. So. It's certainly not unheard of. A lot of other places have experienced the same thing. Um, and um, I am certain that, that our alums will have reaction to this as well. But when someone graduates from here, we have an IPFW Alumni Association, we have a Purdue Alumni Association, and we have an IU Alumni Association. And so every graduate of this institution belongs to the IPFW Association, but they also belong to one of the others according to where their degree, who their degree was awarded by. And so um, as, I have, as I have seen resumes that our graduates have prepared as they're looking for jobs, and sometimes, sometimes they will say on their resume, you know, a, a BS in whatever, Indiana University, and they never mention IPFW. Others will do the same thing, BS in mechanical engineering, Purdue University, they never mention IPFW. And then there are others, other resumes that I've read, um, they list their degree and they say IPFW and don't say whether it's IU or Purdue. <laughs> so it's at some level, it's almost schizophrenic, you know. <laughs> so it's, you know, it, it's it's Purdue, it's IU, it's IPFW. IPFW does not confer degrees. We do not offer degrees. It's either an IU degree or a Purdue degree. Um, I, I think in this inside the campus, there's been more of a unified or a a, a consensus viewpoint of we'd like this not to happen. That's not the case in the external community. Um, there was a contingent that absolutely believed and still do today believe that this is what's in the best interest of Northeast Indiana, that this is going to be what's in the best interest of students um, and the programming of these campuses, that more investment will be made and that it's going to be even better in the future. Um, then there's also a, a, a contingent of, of community leaders who don't see it that way at all. So that, in, in some ways, I, I think has been unfortunate that there hasn't been a consensus externally in terms of really getting behind um, whichever direction it was going to go in. There was still um, very, very divergent views and feelings about it. The discussions that I have participated in have always been about what's in the best interest of the region we serve and current and, and certainly potential students of the region. And as we began this discussion, when this idea was first proposed during this Legislative Services Agency working group time, um, the, uh, what was talked about a lot was that the universities will be much more likely to invest in, invest more money, invest more resources into an entity, each one into the entity that they wholly manage and operate and have control over. The way it is now, and, and what was discussed during the working group, was that if you're a half owner in something, you're not as likely to invest significant resources if you know the other half of the entity you really don't have much control over. And so you're putting money into something that you really don't manage and don't control. And so um, the rationale, um, and, and it makes sense, uh, is that for these institutions, if they have their own independent entity to operate and manage, they're much more likely to pay attention to it, to engage with it, and to help bring the kinds of resources needed to really expand and grow it. These decisions are not made lightly when, when Vice Chancellor Drummond um, put his restructuring plan 
out to the campus community. Um, that was something that was very difficult for him to do. Um, the, the reductions that we have had to make, um, starting four years ago when I first came, the day I walked into the door here, um, there was an $8 million budget deficit that I was faced with. Um, and with declining enrollments every year, um, we find ourselves in the spot where the expenses we have are more than the revenue we have coming in the door. And you're going to go bankrupt <laughs> if you don't cut your expenditures. And so that's what we're doing. And it makes people uh, very mad. Um, it makes people feel very threatened, very vulnerable. I understand that. Um, believe me, there is no one more than me who wishes that we weren't going through this. Um, the programs that the Vice Chancellor identified for, um, for suspension are ones that he, he, he made those decisions based on metrics that he had developed, based on looking at enrollments, enrollment trends over the last four, five, six, some of these programs have been declining in enrollment for a decade. This isn't, this didn't just happen a couple, three years ago. There's some long-standing trends if you go back and look at our enrollment numbers. So they're very, very painful decisions that need to be made. But we cannot continue to, to have more expenses than we have money coming in the door. The institution will go bankrupt if, if we don't cut our expenditures. So that's, that's what we're doing. And it would be irresponsible. Um, it would certainly not be in the best interests of the institution. And you know, one, one of the options uh, for us as an administration and for me would have been to say, well, let's just keep taking the money out of the reserves. We've spent down almost 50% of the reserves. And reserves are built up over years and years and years. And in four years, we've spent down 50%. We've used 50% of our savings account, if you will, to cover the deficit every year. And we simply can't continue to do that. Today, this afternoon, um, the IU Board of Trustees um, voted um, on an agreement that has been negotiated between IU and Purdue to basically accept, endorse that recommendation by the Legislative Services Agency to establish these two independently managed campus entities. Um, I was one who voted against the final LSA report and recommendations. Um, I did not at the time feel it was in the best interests of our students and our community to um, break apart this operation, if you will. Um, I do believe there are opportunities here um, with the decision that has been made. Um, and it is a board of what, what's important to, to remember is it is a board of trustees decision. They are the governing bodies uh, for our university. And so it is, it is our job now to implement these decisions that they have made. And so um, I certainly am committed um, to working very, very hard to implement the decisions that they have made in a way that best serves students that best serve the needs of the community and the region that this campus serves. And whether um, it's IU or whether it's Purdue or whether it's these two campuses as it's been combined, there, there are three things that, that I hope people will, will try to remember over these next days and weeks and months. And one is that um, the students here will continue to be served by the faculty and staff who are here and who are, are wholly trusted by our students. Those faculty and staff um, will continue to be here. They will be the ones to continue to teach the courses and deliver the programs and deliver the services to, to all of you and your colleagues. And so that will remain. Um, the mission will remain the same as it has been for the past 50 years. We are here to serve the educational needs of Northeast Indiana, and we will continue to do that. Both institutions are committed to that mission of serving the region, and they will continue to do that. And uh, clearly, student success is the number one priority for both of these institutions as well, and that's not going to change. Logan has
has this interview with the chancellor changed your opinion on the USAP report at all? Well, I wouldn't say necessarily that it's changed my opinion, but I definitely feel more educated um, about the topic, it, the topic itself. I definitely feel like I came from that interview with a lot more information than I had previously. I had a better understanding of what was happening and why it was happening. Um, but I still have the same stance that I had before the interview. Um, it's just that I am better equipped to discuss the topic at hand. Makes sense. It seems like it'd be a good opportunity to get her perspective from this. It definitely was. It definitely opened my eyes to, to a lot of stuff that had been happening previously on campus as well as what's happening now. Sounds good. On December 3rd, the IPFW League of Legends group had their third annual League of Legends holiday tournament. And now let's take a look. If you would, would you just go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us how long you've been playing the game? All right, uh, my name is Kenda Barnes. My summoner name is Kender. And I've actually kind of been playing since high school, so like three years. But it's just kind of been off and on, so. What is it uh, about an event like this that draws you in or keeps you coming back? Um, I think just like the camaraderie and just like being able to end it, like meet all these new people and um, see everyone else from, I mean even other people from other schools come so you get to meet people from all over and get to play with them and then you can add them on the game and play with them even later when you're at home. What positive effects does a club or an event like this have here on campus in this community? I mean I think this question kind of goes hand in hand with the first one for my answer at least like I think just everyone getting to meet everyone else and um, making new friends. Super and maybe like even then you can play together if you get to uh, meet um, new friends and then you can play together later and then you guys can both go up the ladders together. If you would just uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us why you're here today. Uh, my name is Alex Anderson. I'm a senior nursing student and the vice president of legislation for student government. Alright and what draws you to this event as just a spectator? Um, so personally, I game a lot, and I've actually played uh, League of Legends for a very long time. Um, recently, because of school, I've not been able to play that much, so um, it's good to come out and support the students um, and the student body. I love the fact that they're able to have a turnout like this and a tournament like this as well. Um, so it's really fun to just come out, see what all the hype is about, see all the players, and basically just enjoy myself. What positive effects do, do clubs like these and events like these have on campus and for its community? Um, so the positive impact that it has is, you know, the very word that you just said is community. You know, it promotes a sense of, hey, we're all not alone here. We all have a common interest. You know, we can come together, make a positive outcome, make a really good impact um, for the community because the LOL IPFW club has been here for almost three years, I think, and I will commend them for being one of the most active, active clubs on campus. So it's really cool just to see how they can positively impact um, the IPFW community through video games. It's absolutely amazing. I see that you uh, you got a medal earlier and you were also the team leader of the team that, that won this whole tournament. How does it feel to, uh, to kind of lead a team to victory like that? Um, it's really good. You know, you just got to have to keep a positive attitude. We dropped a couple games, but when there's just someone there who's got you know, the mental stability to tell someone, you know, it's like, you know, we may, we may not be playing well, we can keep doing it. It really bolsters everyone's attitude and they all start playing better. So it's a big responsibility, but it's also just a team thing. So, yeah. We see that you have your um, medal around your neck and yours is a little different because you are the MVP of the whole tournament. So how does, how does something like that feel? That's such a high honor. Is that something you worked really hard for? Yeah, it feels really good. There's a lot of great players here. How much practice exactly did you put into this? Or I guess if you couldn't say exactly, how much would you estimate you uh, you put coming forward into this tournament? I'd probably say about, I don't know, two to three hours a day. I am James Malcolm, president and founder of LOL IPFW Esports. What do you feel um, that your events and your club bring to campus? We bring something to campus that nothing else really does. We bring gaming online gaming to in-person gaming and bring out that community of people that that honestly does sit at home and play video games and brings them a place that they can all play together and make friends and win stuff because everybody likes to win stuff and and just honestly have some fun in in an outlet that they honestly don't have other places. So, I mean, some of them aren't, aren't good at sports, some of them aren't good at school, some of them aren't good at something, but this is what they are good at. So, so this is what, what they look forward to on campus. You mentioned that, um, you know, some of these people might not be good at sports or good at school. A lot of people criticize esports and, and say that it's not even a, a sport per se, um, and actually kind of 
you know, look down on it. What would you say to those people to try and convince them otherwise? Um, the best thing I could do was show them. You're just showing them how real it is. And if I could get them to sit down and, and, and play again, just to show them that they're probably really awful at it. And then once you understand that and you're humbled by that, you understand that people that are beating you up and have been playing and, and understand that this is a deep and heavy concept. So if anyone wanted to join or is interested in finding out more about your group, anything that's going to uh, be happening next, maybe next tournament or just even a next call-out meeting, what, what would you tell them and wh where can they get in contact with you? Emails is the best place to get uh, in contact. We've got a website, you can Google LOL IPFW, IPFW Esports, whatever combination of words, we're the first thing that comes up. Click sign up, you put your name, you put your email in, you get everything I send out. We're back now with our host favorite segment, What Am I Eating? with Logan Torres. And we have prepared here a little holiday special um, food from different countries. So let's get it started. Are you ready? I'm as ready as I'll be, I guess. I am really excited about this one, okay? So the crew has cooked, everybody's cooked something. And let's start with this one. Okay. <laughs> so, how do you celebrate the holidays? Like, what food do you eat? Well, is she? That's actually really good. <laughs> um, I personally go home and spend time with my family, or I'll, uh, before I do that, I'll, I'll hang out with my girlfriend. We'll do our own Christmas kind of thing. That's cute. Yeah, we'll watch a movie or so and then exchange presents. Huh. So, what's your best guess here? Um, it's got brown sugar, some raisins maybe. That's I don't know what, what it would be called. Okay. This is like a fruit cake type of thing. Okay. It's called panettone, and it's from Italy. Well, good um, for the Italians. It's yeah. Delicious. It's got um, some crystallized fruits, and raisins was one of them. So, you got half hey, right. Hey, what's up? All right. Let's go with this one. Now this one is actually American. <laughs> hmm. Well, that's definitely a sugar cookie. Yes, you're right. That's an American sugar cookie. Very Christmassy. Now, this one I could smell from like outside of the studio. <laughs> and it smelled amazing. So what's your favorite Christmas movie? Well, probably Home Alone. Home Alone? Yeah, that's a pretty good one, you know. <laughs> I'm a big Macaulay Culkin fan. I actually had a friend in high school who looked just like him. Really? Yeah, we used to, we used to make fun of him. All, well, not make fun of him, but point it out all the time. He, he says he's gotten it since he was, <laughs> as, as long as he could remember. So, what's your guess? One of my favorites. Mm, it kind of tastes reminiscent of apple pie, um, but that's all I got. This is an Irish baked apple. That's really it's good. It's fancy and it smells amazing. I sure have to try later. Okay, I don't know if I can cut this one. All right, this is our last one. <laughs> Are you excited for your Christmas presents this year? Well, yeah, actually. Um, that's really weird. But yeah, um, my girlfriend's got me hyped up. She says she's got me a really good gift, and I'm actually probably more excited to give my gifts than I am to receive them, but we'll, we'll see. That's how I am. All right, what do you think? That tasted like a gumdrop. Um, I, again, aside from what it might be or what it, what it reminds me of, I really don't know what that is. Okay, this is called a Turkish candy. And obviously it's from Turkey. Mm -hmm. And if you have ever watched Narnia, this is what the Ice Queen gives to Edmund in the movie. So that's a little fun fact for you. This is all we have for today. You can take your blindfold off. Great. And see how pretty these looks? Okay, yeah. No, that baked apple was really good. Yeah. Um, and then again with that that uh, Italian dish, I don't, I don't know what it was called, but it's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. good. I like that one too. All right. 
Um, well, this is our um, what am I eating segment for today. And if you have any other fun um, recipes that you do and you cook, we would sure like to um, know. So just make sure you send it to us uh, on a Facebook page or YouTube or whatever. It was nice doing this. Yeah, wasn't awesome. It? Well, thank you for having me again. Um, it's all, it's always an interesting experience getting to try some <laughs> some new food. I'm always for it, um, and this time it definitely didn't disappoint. So thank yep. you very much. Yes. Now give us a minute, and after a word from Emily, I've got something to get you back. On December 1st, the Indiana administration voted on the separation of IPFW into Indiana and Purdue. With a vote of seven to two, they voted to move forward with the separation. On December 16th, the Purdue administration will have the same vote. Should the vote pass, the process of separating most of IPFW from Indiana will move into the final steps. Thank you, Emily. Now, for us to get our other reporter back. Isabella, please join me on set. No. So, so are you familiar with the, the word game Mad Libs? No. Okay. So what it is, is I'll ask you to give me um, a word when I give you like, uh, like a set of parameters for the word. So if I say a noun, you give me a noun. Or if I say, like give me a number, you just give me a number. Does that make okay. sense? Okay. Yep. All right, so first thing, um, got a list here. Give me a silly word. Biscuit. Okay, and give me a last name. Ludwig. Okay. And give me an illness, like a sickness. Um, med cow disease. <laughs> okay. Um, give me a noun, but make it plural. Gooses. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then give me an adjective, and then followed by another adjective. Huge. And um, moist. <laughs> Huge, moist. Okay. And give me another silly word. Super fragilistic expialidocious. Okay, I think I know what you're trying to say, and I'm just going to abbreviate that one. <laughs> Super califragilistic expialidocious. Super califragilistic expialidocious. Um, the last three things I'll need is give me a place, then a number, and then an adjective. Okay. China. Okay. China, China. Uh. 1738. Okay. Eight. And what was the last one? Uh, and then give me an adjective. Uh, gassy. Gassy. All right. Okay, we'll be back in just a second to see how this plays out. Hello, this is Sunnydale Elementary, Mr. Torres speaking. Hello, Mr. Torres. Um, this is Mrs. Ludwig. My son Biscuit Ludwig will not be attending class today. Um, he came down with the mad cow disease, and he has horrible geese. Geese? Well, that sounds serious. It is. Biscuit also has huge fever. We made an appointment with the moist doctor, uh, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Shoot, the moist doctor? Yep. He studied in China. China, 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 and he has 1738 degrees in pediatrics. Oh shoot, yeah, of course. He'll just send you all the information you'll need. Well shoot, Mrs. Ludwig, it's good having you on set. I really enjoyed that one. Thanks, it was nice having you too. You know, shoot dude, anytime we got that Southern hospitality, so you know, <laughs> love to have you back on set sometime, Mrs. Ludwig. We, uh, we hope Biscuit's feeling okay. <laughs> Me too, go home, peace. Well, nice of you to join us again, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for watching The Dons. I hope you enjoyed this week's holiday show, and good luck on finals, everyone. Keep it classy, Fort Wayne.